y'all. I'm Paula Dean. Y'all jump in your swimsuits and grab your beach blankets because today we're going on a land and sea excursion. First, we're going to pay a visit to Matthew's Seafood, truly one of the best places in town to get the freshest seafood. And then we're heading back to the kitchen where I'm going to be cooking up a mouth-watering beef wellington. And after that, a juicy steak with a creamy shrimp pie that takes center stage on our plate. And last, my fresh green bean and tomato salad plucked right from the garden. So I hope y'all have had plenty of rest because it's going to be a busy day. Good morning, y'all. I'm getting so hungry thinking about today's menu that I'm preparing. We're on our way to Matthew's Seafood to pick us up some oysters and some shrimp because today's menu is all about surf and turf. Whether you're cooking seafood for two or 200, you really can't beat the taste and freshness of your local seafood market. That's why I always try to go to Matthew's Seafood where I'm guaranteed the best catch from the sea. In fact, today I'm gonna need some shrimp and oysters. You know, most local seafood markets not only clean your shrimp for you, but they will even fillet the fish of your choice right on the spot. So it's all ready to go when you get it home. Not many super supermarkets offer this service, but it's one that can save you tons of time in your kitchen. Your local seafood monger is also a great source for tips, like how you should make sure to buy only oysters that are closed all the way. They're the freshest. And also, the seafood should be kept ice cold. All right, y'all, I think it's time for us to get to our kitchen with the fresh catch. I feel so fortunate that not only is Trey Matthews the supplier of the seafood for the restaurant, he's also my friend, so he's gonna make sure that I get the good stuff all the time. So I'm actually making a beef wellington with an oyster pate. But before we get started, I wanna show you how to shuck an oyster. We're just gonna take them out and you wanna make sure that you have either an oyster glove or a rag. I kind of like to have mine down on something and this gives me better control if I do it this way. And we're gonna take our oyster and on this end, there's a small little crack and that little crack will allow you to get your oyster knife down in there. And once you get it in there, turn your knife sideways and that will open up your oyster. Ooh, it looks so good. And that's all there is to it. Okay, let's move back down here to our beef tenderloin. And I've got a pan that's getting hot here. And I'm gonna put a little olive oil and butter because the butter by itself might burn a little bit. And I'm gonna sit that off for a second. Ooh, that butter's popping. I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to coat our meat with a little olive oil, and then I'm gonna encrust it with just salt and black pepper. And I'm not gonna be shy with my salt because it's gonna make a nice crust for us. Now we're just gonna coat it good with pepper all the way around. Okay, we've got our meat ready for the pan. Our pan is nice and hot. And we're just gonna stick it in there. And we're gonna sear it all over and it's smelling so good already. We don't want to get him too done because when I slice into him, I want him to be nice and red. And I'm gonna move him right there. All right, to all the good seasoning and stuff that came off of him, I'm gonna add some mushrooms and shallots and some fresh garlic. And I'm just gonna saute that in all that good juice that came out of our meat. It's getting right though, it smells so yummy. So we're gonna take our drained oysters and throw them over in here. And we're just gonna saute those oysters 
until they get that kind of opaque look. And it doesn't take long at all to cook an oyster. So this is gonna take just a second. They're already starting to curl up on me. All right, so those are going along and we're gonna add about one tablespoon of sherry. And that's gonna help deglaze our pan. And you'll wanna use a good sherry, uh, not necessarily a cooking sherry. All right, it looks like our oysters are just about to get there. All right, that's ready. And we're gonna come over here to our food processor and we're gonna throw in some cracker crumbs. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna take our oysters and add them in with our cracker crumbs. Just like that. Yum. All right, now I'm gonna use the pulser on this because it won't take much to process it to the point that we're gonna need it. Okay. Now we're just gonna take our pate and we're gonna drain it using some cheesecloth because we want this nice and stiff. And I'm just gonna put this right in there. It's at a wonderful consistency. All right, so our pate looks wonderful. And I'm gonna come down here and clean up. And while I'm doing that, we're gonna take a quick break. And when we come back, we're gonna finish putting our beef wellington together and we're gonna have steak and pie. Steak and shrimp pie, that is. While y'all were gone, I got everything cleaned up and I was even able to go ahead and roll out our puff pastry for our beef wellington. It's a great product that you can find in the grocery store uh, in the frozen food section. And all I'm gonna do is take our pate and I'm gonna spread it around and we're just gonna kinda run him out so that when we put our meat on there, it's about the same size and shape as the meat, and we're just gonna do it even. All right, now we're gonna take our meat, and I'm gonna put the pretty side down, just like that. All right, now I'm just gonna dampen that edge with a little water, using my fingers just like that. Then I'm gonna just pull this over so that it will seal. And I'm gonna kinda do a little tuck here, pull that right up there press him down so that I know that he's good and sealed. All right, now I've lightly greased my cookie sheet and I'm gonna transfer him very gently. And I've got an egg and a little bit of water beaten up right here. So we're just gonna brush him all over so that every part that your guest sees will have that sheen to it. Your puff pastry actually comes packaged, two big sheets. So I've used some of it to do us some little cutouts because this is just so pretty to just put a little design on it. You could use a cookie cutter. So this just makes it look like you've gone to a little bit more trouble than you actually have. So now we're gonna go back and just pat that because we want the leaves or whatever you decide to do to be as pretty and as shiny as the rest of your beef wellington. And while he's cooking, we're gonna move on down here and start our pie. Oh, look how good that looks. In that one goes for about 15 or 20 minutes, and I've actually got another one ready in the other oven, and I'm gonna pull it out because this really needs to sit and rest for 10 or 15 minutes before you cut it. So we're gonna take him out. It looks really, really good. Now you can cook this anywhere from 350 to 450, but while this is resting, we're gonna come down here, we're gonna start the crust, for our shrimp pie. Start with a stick of butter and a three ounce package of cream cheese and a cup of just all purpose flour. So, we're gonna cut that together until we get a nice dough. I think I'm gonna finish it off with a spoon. Yeah, I'm gonna just mash it around like that. Now you know this is gonna be a good crust. Butter and cream cheese. Okay, so we're gonna divide this up into six little balls because that'll perfectly fill up 
our muffin tins for our shells. In fact, I've already got some already done that's been chilling. Got them right here. And they're nice and chilled. Okay. So we're just gonna work these with our hands. We're not even gonna use a rolling pin. Just gonna kinda get them going. And this has been lightly sprayed. And we're just gonna stick them in there. This is a yummy, yummy crust though. Just turns out great every time. So we got these ready and into the oven they go. We're gonna pop these in for about eight to 10 minutes. And in the meantime, I've got some ready in this other oven because I kind of want to fill these while our pie crust are kind of warm. And you can see in that non-stick pan, they're going to do beautifully for us. All right, in the meantime, I've got some butter back here melting in my good old reliable cast iron skillet. All right. Now, all I'm going to do is make a white sauce. And I'm going to add the flour and just stir that around. This is going to be so good and so rich. <laughs> to this, add some cream. And we're going to get at that creamy white sauce that we're looking for. So we're just going to slowly add that. Stir it around just a little bit. I think I'll add the mushroom soup. Get all of our liquid going in there. And that's just going to give it a great flavor. OK, so I'm going to add just canned mushrooms. Mix that up in there, and I'm going to add a little garlic powder. All right, now we're going to add grated Parmesan cheese. And if you feel like it's just too, too thick for you, you can always use the juice from your mushrooms and thin it out a little bit, which is what I'm doing. I'm going to thin it just a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to add my beaten egg to it. And you'll want to make sure that this is cooled off a little bit because you don't want it to scramble your eggs. All right, now the last thing we've got to do to this is add the shrimp. And I've got one pound of shrimp that's already been cooked, peeled, deveined, and chopped. And we're just going to throw them in here and then we're ready to put this into our pie filling. Mm, 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 mm. I could eat it just like this. But there's one more thing that we're going to do to it. I've got some breadcrumbs right here and I'm just going to toss in with a little butter that I've got melted back here. You know, I always seem to have just a little extra butter in my kitchen somewhere. You don't usually have to go too far to find it. And just toss those breadcrumbs with that butter. All right. So we're going to start stuffing our crust with that heavenly, heavenly pie filling. It's just going to be out of this world. All right, so now all we're gonna do with this is cover it with the buttered crumbs, just like that. And we're gonna cook these at 350 for about 15 or 20 minutes. We kinda just want them to get bubbly and we want our bread crumbs to be nice and toasted. And when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to present this wonderful shrimp pie that you, your family, and your guests are just gonna love. Okay, we're back and I'm finishing up the mushrooms and I think our pies are about ready. So let's go over here and check and see what they look like. Oh gosh, and remember I told you about making sure butter got on every one of those crumbs. Look how yummy they look. Okay, we've got our cast iron skillet heating up. We want our pan to be pretty hot because we're gonna do this rather quickly. Now I'm gonna add a little olive oil and I've got some fresh minced garlic I'm gonna go ahead and throw in there. And while that's getting soft, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna give us a few slices of spring onion or green onion or scallions, whatever you call them. We're just gonna have a few to throw in our pan. So now I'm gonna take our meat and I'm using a very closely trimmed beef tenderloin that's not gonna take much cooking. So I'm just gonna season it up with some kosher salt and then we're gonna put a little black pepper on it. 
All right, now I'm gonna toss our meat in that hot pan. I'm gonna kinda push that to the side now, and I'm gonna throw our mushrooms right on in that pan and let them be sauteing while our steak's browning. All right, I think at this point I'm gonna drop just a little butter in there. All right, I'm gonna flip these on over. And while this is cooking, let's run on down here and we're gonna put together our salad real quick like that we're gonna have along with our steak and pie and our beef wellington. I've taken some fresh green beans and I've actually blanched them for about five or six minutes. And I'm gonna salt these, put in just some green peas and sliced water chestnuts. I just love these things in a salad. I just love the crunchiness. All right, and I'm gonna toss it with some just diced or chopped ripe tomatoes. This is when those little egg slicers come in so handy, but we're gonna just slice ours like this. Okay, so I'm gonna add some mayonnaise. And I always like to use a good quality mayonnaise. All right, now I'm gonna just squeeze a little fresh lemon juice over it. And I'm gonna add some fresh ground pepper, which really flavors it nicely. All right, now I'm just gonna take my little salad fingers and give that a little toss. And it'll take just a few turns to get it all mixed together. I think I'm gonna just come down here and bury a few of my onions and toss in there as well. So this beats just having an ordinary toss salad. And y'all can see how I'm serving this. I've just lined my dish with a little lettuce. All right, I'm gonna take my meat out of here because I don't want it to get too done on me because I'm a medium rare girl, so. I wanna keep it to that temperature. All right, I'm gonna add these green onions. Oh, look at those mushrooms, how they've gotten nice and brown. Now I'm gonna deglaze this with a little beef stock and add a little cream. And I'm gonna let this cook down just for a minute and kinda of get thick and scrape all the goodies around there. So I'm just gonna let that heat on up real good and it won't take long for it to evaporate. So in the meantime, I think I'm gonna get my pie out of here. Oh, wee. I'm gonna transfer it over to this plate. And that pie is gonna take center stage. You can see that this is reducing fairly quickly. I think we're almost ready to go with this and I'm just gonna toss that meat around and let it get good and coated. Oh, it's looking so, so good. And this is how I present my steak and tomato pie at the restaurant. It's gonna be yummy. Well, this is my favorite time, folks. So let's see what we've got. I wanna be able to have the pie and the steak all in one bite. Oh, it looks so delicious. This dish is the best of both worlds. And when we come back, y'all, I'm gonna share some tips with y'all. So hang around, there's more good eating ahead. I wanted to share with you a few tips that have worked very well for me at home. When I'm having a heavy meal like beef, Michael and I just feel depraved or deprived if we don't have a bite of something sweet at the end of our meal. I have made some little chocolate milkshakes. Now in this milkshake I have crushed ice, a little sugar, ice cream, milk, chocolate syrup. And I've stopped there because I don't know how many children I'm actually going to be serving tonight. So I'm just gonna pour these into these great little shot glasses. Now to decorate these for the children, I'm gonna put them a dollop of fresh whipping cream and one more little squirt of chocolate. But for the adults, I'm gonna top ours with a little
coffee liqueur, and it's a wonderful start or finish for any meal. No matter whether I'm serving beef lovers or seafood lovers at my house, I have never had a complaint on either of these dishes. And since I'm having oysters, I really wanted my napkin rings to kind of match my meal. So all I've done here is taken an, an ordinary napkin ring and I've just glue gunned the oyster shells. And look how good those look. These tenderloin beef tips with the shrimp pie is just out of this world. And that beef wellington with that oyster pate in it just looks completely sinful. And don't forget these wonderful little starters or finishers. Until next time, America, I send you best dishes, hugs, and kisses from me to you.